Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? Joey Shirkenbach is back here with another video for you guys. Uh, guys, it is Saturday night, and I'm going to be giving you my game picks for, for week 14 of the 2020 NFL season. So let's jump right on into it, guys. First game, we have the 4 and 8 Broncos at the 4 and 8 Panthers. Not a game anybody is overly interested in. Both teams are just not good at all. Uh, especially the Panthers, they're absolute garbage. They were three and four at one point. People were trying to say that, that, that they're actually a decent team. They're not at all. Uh, they need to go in rebo mode and just keep McCaffrey. Apparently, they have this like insane defensive tackle. I forget his name, but they drafted him. Apparently, he's good. But other than that, there's no one else on that defense because, of course, they lost James Bradbury. And that's a big loss. Of course, Luke Keekley retired in the offseason. So, uh, Panthers are not in good shape. They need to totally rebuild. Uh, Broncos, they're not good. I mean, they can pull off upsets if they need to. But overall, they're not good. However, I'm kind of going contradict, to contradict myself here. Uh, I actually was pretty impressed with how the Broncos held with the Chiefs last weekend. They actually almost beat them. But at the same time, the Chiefs sometimes just are off. Like, all teams have off games. And I still think the Chiefs are way better than way better than, than the Broncos. But I got to kind of credit the Broncos. They went into Arrowhead and actually stuck with them. They held that offense to 22 points. That's pretty impressive. Mahomes statist statistically played very, very well. But that's still pretty impressive for Denver. Uh, anyways, I think they're the better team. I don't think, I, again, either no, t neither team is good, but I'm still going to take the Broncos here, guys, even though they're on the road. Let's go Denver here. 27-17. Uh, 27-17 Denver. Next game, guys, we have the 6-6 six six Cardinals at the 5-7 Giants. This is a must-win for the Cardinals. They are really starting to slip, slip out of control, I guess you could say. Um... I mean, I think there's a very, very low chance they win the division, but they might not go to the playoffs. And if they lose tomorrow, I'd say they're probably not going to. At the same time, it's also kind of a must win for the Giants. I mean, they're in first place in the division, but they ain't leading by much. They need to they need to keep winning if they if they want to win the division. And, you know, they'll probably win it at, you know, seven and nine, at worst six and ten. It's just that division, the NFC East, oh my god, it's just a schoolyard. It's so, so bad. Uh, Cardinals, they're struggling, man. I've been telling you guys, I told you guys, the Cardinals are overrated, especially Kyler Murray. They're just not that good. They're, I mean, their offense is good. They do have the best wide receiver in football, but uh, defense is not good besides um, Chandler Jones, who's out for the year, and Buda Baker. Um, and they just don't have the pieces. Giants, I mean, man, that upset last weekend at Seattle, their defense played so well. It was so weird. Their defense totally dominated. They won like, what, 17-12, I want to say? Giants are so weird this year, but believe it or not, they are favorites to win that division and go to the playoffs. So ironic, it's the theme of 2020. Um, In New York, so I, I don't want to go with the Giants here, but, no, I'm not going to. The Giants defense have has pieces. Uh, Jabal Sheard, um, Shaq Lawson, and there's some other guys who I'm forgetting as well. Uh, it's in New York, again, as I said, but I still think the Cardinals are going to win this game. I think the Cardinals are the better team. And although the Giants have pieces, they're not that good. Uh, Cardinals, it's a must win for them. I know it's kind of a must win for the Giants too, but the Cardinals um, are cold right now. They're going to be angry. They're motivated to get this win. I'm going to go with the Cardinals here, guys. Uh, third, no. 28-20. Next game, guys, very likely the game of the week. 11-1 Chiefs at the 8-4 Dolphins. This is going to be a very, very fun game to watch. Probably going to be the game that I watch because, of course, the Ravens are on Monday night this week. Um, Chiefs continuing to dominate. Had a little bit of a rough game last weekend against Denver. They certainly were not their best. Uh, Miami continuing to slip a, a sneak by. I don't think the Dolphins are that good, and I think they're kind of overrated, but they're still good enough. Their defense is pretty good. I kind of feel like their defense isn't good on paper, but it's uh, contributing and playing at a very high level. I mean, they have a great secondary, Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. That's all you need. That quarter, that cornerback duo is excellent, and they're going to need that against the Chiefs receivers. Uh, pass rush isn't bad either. Uh, Manuel Ogba... 
Um, actually, you know what? I, I said Shaq Lawson. Shaq Lawson might be on the Dolphins. Yeah, sorry, guys. I'm getting my names backwards. I think it's Shaq Lawson as a pass rusher on the Dolphins, and they do have Emmanuel Ogba as well. They have Kyle Van Noy. I don't know how well he's been doing this year, uh, but the Dolphins' defense isn't bad. And again, I kind of feel like it doesn't look great on paper, but it does certainly overperform. Um... Offense really isn't that good. Uh, Tua, mad overhyped. He's just simply not good. Uh, Devontae Parker's good. They don't really have much of a rushing attack. I don't know anyone remotely good on their offensive line. Um, so, it, And that's the thing. To beat the Chiefs, you need to have an offense who's, who can score like essentially every drive. The Dolphins are not that team. I know their defense is good, but it's you know they can be good all they want. It's not going to stop that offense. And I know for sure the Dolphins' defense... Again, not bad, but it's not good enough to stop that offense. Not a chance. I'm going to go with the Chiefs here, guys. I think it's going to be close, and I'm really looking forward for it to be in the game of the week. But I am going to go with the Chiefs here, guys. Uh, let's go Kansas City. 34-27. to But again, should be a great game. Next game, guys, we have the 3-9 and Cowboys at the 2-9-1 and Bengals. Cowboys coming out of a loss to the Ravens on Tuesday. Bengals all banged up, of course. Burrow out for the year. Um, th again, this like who actually cares about this game? Uh, I guess uh, the Bengals are going to win. I mean, while they're banged up, I think overall the Bengals are the better team. When health, actually, I shouldn't say that. When healthy, the Cowboys are the better team. But right now, I would probably take the Bengals. Um, I mean, their offense is good, their defense is terrible, but the Cowboys are so bad. E Elliot. Totally has totally fallen off the rails. Great receivers, but uh, other than that, they just have no one. Their defense is terrible. Leighton Vander Ash, I know he's been hurt. He's having a rough year. Demarcus Lawrence having a rough year. Um, it's in Cincinnati. I guess I'll take the Bengals here, guys. Again, not a game anybody really cares about, but I'm going to go with the Bengals here, guys. Uh, 24 to 21. Next game, guys, we have the 4-8 and eight Texans at the 5-7 and seven Bears. Bears have just, again, fallen off a cliff. They have lost six games in a row. They were 5-1. and one. They are now 5-7. and seven. Six losses in a row for the Bears. Uh, Titans, or excuse me, Texans, 4-8. Uh, and eight, not, and, I mean, at the same time, though, again, guys, the Texans have one of the toughest schedules in the league, and they have been hanging with the good teams. They almost, they barely lost to Pittsburgh. They barely lost to Indianapolis last week. Uh, the, um, the, excuse me, Texans are not a bad team. They're not good, but they have had a tough schedule, and they're hanging in there. They're not going to run the playoffs or anything. They'll go like 5-11, and 6-10, and 10, but I do kind of got a shout out to the Texans. They've been hanging well with the good teams, and again, they have had a very, very hard schedule. Um, it's really, I, I don't know, guys. I kind of misjudged Deshaun Watson. I've always thought he was overrated. I still think he is a bit, but again, this year he's kind of carrying the offense on his back. Um, because their offense is good. It's been good this year. Um, Will Fuller, when healthy, is good, but then he got suspended for, uh, like, taking steroids. So at the same time, is Will Fuller really that good? Because he was doing well, but he was taking steroids. So is he really that good? We'll see. Um, but anyways... Uh, they're, again, their offense is good besides their offensive line. They need to fix their offensive line. It's absolute garbage, but Watson playing very, very well. He's actually having a big year, believe it or not. Um, I don't, I would say this is a must win for the Bears, but I don't even know if the Bears have a chance anymore. They've lost six in a row. Packers continue to dominate that division. Vikings, you know, let me check their record. Vikings, I don't even, you know what? I don't see it here. Oh, Vikings are six and six. So, the um, Vikings need to lose, and the Bears need to win uh, to, for them to get even. I don't know who has a tiebreaker, tiebreaker, because they're not they're in the NFC, so I don't follow them as much. But, um, I guess I should say it's still a must win for the Bears. They still have a slim chance of getting in, but they need to get their act together. Their playoffs start now. I cannot believe how cold they are. Their defense is excellent. It's just their offense is so, so bad. It's going to be interesting to see how well the Texans' offense does against this Bears' defense. Um, in Chicago, while the Texans are good, uh, actually, no, they're not really. While the Texans have been competing with the good teams, the Bears, they have to be so angry to get this win. I can't see them dropping seven in a row, right? I'm going to go with the Bears here, guys. Uh, let's go Chicago 27-23. to 23. Again, should be another close game that the Texans just fall short. 
Uh, next game, we have the 8-4 and four Titans at the 1-11 and 11 Jaguars. Jaguars, again, one week one against the Colts. Ever since then, they have lost 11 in a row. We're in double digits, di- double digits now. Uh, Titans, who did you play last week? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember who the Titans played. Uh, but anyways, Titans, uh, very, 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 very good team. Oh, yeah, that that's what. They lost to the Browns, a shootout game. Uh, could not stop the Browns' offense. I don't know, man. The Titans' defense is not good at all this year. Last year, it was okay. They kind of slid by without it. This year, their defense is kind of gar- it's kind of garbage, to, to be honest with you. Um... But the Titans, obviously, this game should not be remotely close. Clearly the better team. At the same time, though, week two, when the um, Jaguars went into te- went into Tennessee, they actually hung with them. The Jaguars almost won. So, got to give a little bit of credit to Jacksonville. And they did also shut down Derrick Henry. He had, like, 12 carries for six yards. Henry was non-existent. But at the same time, Henry is hot right now. Uh, He hasn't really been slowed down for a while. He was pretty good last week. It's just they actually, I shouldn't say that. He wasn't great last week, but it was more of they didn't feed him much because, again, the Titans really can't play from behind. Uh, But I think Henry will probably feast this game because the Titans are going to have the lead first, probably the whole game, and they're just going to keep feeding him, and Henry's just going to mow him down. Uh, the Jaguars, besides Avery Jones, they have no one on, no one on that defensive line anymore. I guess Josh Allen, but he's more of a pass rusher than a run stuffer. Um, it's in Jacksonville. I'm not going to make a difference, guys. I'm going to go with the Titans here. Shouldn't be close. 37 to 20. Next game, guys, we have the six and six Vikings at the seven and five Bucks. Bucks. I feel like they haven't played in ages. I think they had a bye week last week. Um, va, let's see here. Vikings. So. They have a chance that they're they've been turning it on for sure. I don't know why, but the Vikings are certainly certainly getting better. They're going off to a really uh, freezing cold start. They have been turning it on. Um, the Bucks have been really back and forth. I kind of feel like again every other game is the theme for them. They they look like a Super Bowl team one game, then the next game they look, they look like absolute garbage. Uh, but and while the Vikings are on the hotter side right now, it's in Tampa Bay. The Vikings or excuse me, the Bucks know they need to secure a solid playoff spot. Probably not, definitely not the top seed because of the Saints, but the Vic uh, god, I keep getting them backwards. The Bucks I don't see them dropping this game. They're coming off a bye as well. I'm pretty sure they were on the bye last week. Um, I don't see the Vikings going into Tampa Bay winning this game. It just doesn't sound logical. I'm going to go with the Bucks here, guys. Um, let's go Tampa Bay, 31-20. to Next game, guys. Big game here. 8-4 and four Colts at the 7-5 and five Raiders. Raiders were about to lose to the, um, excuse me, the Jets. Like the worst, the worst team in the league, but they didn't because the Jets decided to send in like a huge blitz and they beat them over the top because the Jets are the Jets. They choke it every game. So when I first saw that, I was kind of like, you know, did the Jets do it on purpose to get a high draft pick and all that? But they did fire their defensive coordinator after the game, what, Greg Williams or whatever his name is. So that makes it very, very evident they did not do that on purpose. They actually wanted to win and their defensive coordinator choked it. I just can't get over the call. Blitzing when you, uh, the Raiders of the ball, like the 50 yard line, only like 10 seconds left. You had the lead and you blitz like six or seven guys. What are you doing? Especially, and again, they, you need to blitz. It's really hard to get pressure with a four man front against the Raiders because their offensive line is very, very good. It's totally elite. Rodney Hudson, best center in the game. Gabe Jackson, I'm pretty sure he's a tackle. They also have Trent Brown. The Raiders offensive line, it's very good. So you kind of got to blitz unless you unless you're the Steelers to get like consistent pressure, but you don't you don't blitz in that scenario. So they choked it. The Raiders got the win, but more importantly, I'm getting a little bit off topic here. The Raiders are are totally slumping right now. They almost lost to the Jets. Defense once again not getting it done, and their offense is good, but the Raiders look sloppy. They absolutely look sloppy right now. And with the way they've played the past couple weeks, I don't even think they have a chance against the Colts. I know it's in uh, Las Vegas, and the Raiders are always better at home. It's that's pretty evident, especially Derek Carr. Um, 
But still, the Colts are playing well right now. Uh, they don't have any significant injuries. Again, Phillip Rivers is nothing incredibly special, but he's getting the job done. The Colts' defense looks pretty good. DeForest Buckner, I'm pretty sure, is back. Huge, huge weapon on that defensive line. Um, so I'm definitely going to go with the Colts here. I think it should be reasonably close, but I'm going to go with the Colts here, guys. Let's go into Indianapolis. Um... 30, no, yeah, pretty high scoring, actually. Screw the defenses. Uh, let's go Indianapolis, 34-28. It's kind of a bold prediction, but I think it's going to be high scoring. But Colts win 34-28 in kind of a shootout. Okay, let's see. I just want to make sure I covered all of these. Our next game, guys, we have the 0-12 Jets at the 8-4 Seahawks. Um, Oh, boy, man. The Jets. I just, <laughs> they are the ch um. Ch chotes, chets, whatever you want to call them. Choke artists. That's all you need to do. Say they're absolute garbage. Um, yeah, they're, they're terrible. They need to go in full rebuild mode. They already kind of are. Um, but yeah, anyways, the Seahawks, they need to get their act together. They just lost to the Giants at home. And I know the Giants are a really weird team, but Seattle needs to get it under control here. That was pretty... That was very, very nerve-wracking if you're a Seattle fan. They looked incredibly flat. Really, their defense kept them in that game. I know the uh, Giants' offense is terrible because they, they don't have Saquon Barkley. Daniel Jones has a hard time staying healthy, and he's not any good. The receivers suck. Um, but, yeah, that was, that was pretty scary. Their offense was so flat. Um, but it shouldn't be a problem here. The Jets, they literally have no one besides my boy Flacco. They have absolutely no one. Jamison Crowder, big deal. It's it's ridiculous on how bad they are. It's in Seattle, guys. This should be an absolute walloping massacre. Seattle going to be pissed off after getting upset by the Giants at home last weekend. I'm going to go with Seattle here. Total blowout, 45-10. to 10. Uh, I Jets fans, I'm sorry. I know you did. Almost beat the Raiders, but you don't have a chance against Seattle. So 45-10 Seattle. Again, kind of a bold prediction. I don't expect it to be any close. All right. Uh, I think this is our last late game. We have the 9-3 Packers at the 5-7 Lions. Lions season's done. They're, they were hanging on by a thread, but they've fallen off. Vikings are hot right now. Bears still have a chance. The Lions are not going to go this year. Uh, not that uh, that's surprising. I didn't. No one's expecting them to. Uh, Packers continuing to play at a very, very high level. Aaron Rodgers, dominant across the board. Uh, defense still lacking. Still need, need to work on some of their holes, but it's, you know, it's getting there. Um, it shouldn't be, I mean, the Lions offense actually isn't bad now that I think about it. Matthew Stafford, on Johnson, Kenny Galladay. So, it, I could see it being maybe a bit of a shootout, eh, but not really. The Packers are the far better team, again, when Aaron Rodgers is on, he's on, and right now he is on. This whole season he's been on, guys. As I said, I don't like to you know what myself, but I um he, I predicted from the start of the season Aaron Rodgers MVP year. So far, that's working out very very well. Aaron Rodgers has been excellent this year, having having one of his best years of his career, I think, at least to, uh, statistically. Uh, and I don't expect that to change. The Lions' defense is absolutely atrocious. To make matters worse, Jeff Akuda is out for the year. They're one good cornerback. I mean, apparently he actually wasn't having a great rookie year, but it's still a loss. Uh, in Detroit, not going to make a difference, guys. I think the Packers will destroy him. I'm going to go with the Packers here, guys. 34-17. to So not a crush, but the Packers should dominate. 34-17 is what I'm going to go with for now. Okay, let me just make sure I got all the late games. Oh, no, we still have a couple more. Um, ooh, three more. Jeez. Getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Four, uh, next game, guys. Four and eight Falcons at the three and nine Chargers. Uh, Chargers got absolutely massacred by the, um, what's their name? The Patriots last week. 45 to nothing. Oh my god, that was ugly. Falcons, not any good. Uh, they have their moments, but they're they're choke artists. They're not worthy anything, worth anything. But I actually think the Falcons are gonna get this win. The Chargers, uh, offensive line so banged up, they laid an egg to one of the worst pass rushes in the league last year. I mean, last week, excuse me. The Patriots, um, defense is banged up. It's not that good. Too inconsistent. Falcons' offense is good, and they should absolutely tear them up. Uh, Falcons defense sucks as well, so it should be pretty high scoring, but I think the Falcons are going to get this win. I know they're the choke artists, and, they, and they'll probably have a lead and then choke it, but I'm going to go with the Falcons here, guys. Um, let's go Atlanta here. 
Uh, 28 to 20. Uh, next game, guys, This we have the 10-2 Saints at the 3-8-1 and and Eagles. So, apparently, the uh, uh, Drew Brees is on his way back. I don't I don't think he's playing this week. I think he has one more game off, but then, apparently, he's coming back. Quite a remarkable recovery for Drew Brees, and I'm happy for him, man. While he's certainly aging, certainly having a down year, I am happy for him to be back. Uh, so, I think it's still Taysom Hill as a starting quarterback. They're taking him over Jameis Winston. I mean, it's not biting them. I think overall, Winston, I mean, excuse me, Hill has been good. Um, Eagles, you know, they were the leaders for the playoffs this year to win that division. They have fallen off the rails. Injuries, of course, don't help, but the Eagles are totally done. Um, Saints just roaring right now. Oh, and that reminds me. I heard Carson Wentz finally put on the bench. Jalen Hurts going to be the starting quarterback. It is about time, man. I mean, Wentz has just had he he just needs to he just needs to totally erase this from his resume and just put it away because oh my god, the year that Wentz has been having is just outrageously bad. Oh my god, it's awful. And I know his weapons, his supporting has has been absolute garbage, but man, Wentz has laid a fat egg. Um Saints though again dominating right now. I don't uh, see that changing. I know Jalen Hurts is coming in, but inexperienced. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. I'm going to go with the Saints here, guys. Um, let's go New Orleans here. 37 to 24. Next game, guys. We have the five and seven football team at the five and seven Niners. Uh, Niners five and seven coming off a close loss last week. I want to say right. Uh, oh yeah, they lost to Buffalo in a shootout game. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a shootout. Josh Allen popped off. I heard. I didn't get to watch that game because of homework issue, because of homework reasons. But I heard that Josh Allen was amazing. Uh, football team. They still have a chance to go to the playoffs. The only issue is they need to win tomorrow, and they need the um, Giants to lose. I know the Giants have the tiebreaker over the football team because the Giants be, uh, swept them. I'm pretty sure. It's a really a must win for the football team. Niners, they'll play for pride. I don't they're not going this year. While the Cardinals are falling off, they also have to compete with the Rams and the Seahawks, who are clearly better than them. Even though the Niners have swept the Rams, there's that. But still, I, I don't think uh the Niners really have a chance this year. It's in San Francisco. Uh I am gonna take the Niners. I think they're a decent team. Went healthy. Uh, actually, I mean, went healthy. Last year, they were a Super Bowl contender. Uh, they were they were in the Super Bowl. La, this year, I still think overall, when healthy, they would not have been as good. But they still would have been a solid 9-7, and 10-6 and six team, in my opinion, at least. Um, it would have been good. But, of course, all the injuries to everyone. Their team was decimated this year with injuries. It's in San Francisco, guys. Um, the Niners may not look good on paper. But I actually have a weird feeling that the Niners are going to win this game. I'm going to go with San Francisco here, guys. Um, let's go San Francisco, 24-17 to in a rather in a rather low-scoring game. Next game, guys, this is going to be a very, very fun game. Two back-to-back -back really big games here. Sunday Night Football, the Monday Night Football, we got the 11-1 Steelers at the 9-3 Bills. Steelers taking their first loss of the season. Oh, so I guess before we totally move on, football team are... They're coming off. They finally wiped off the only undefeated team left. The Steelers got the win in Pittsburgh. Steelers no longer undefeated. Finally, they took a loss. It was about time. God, congratulations to the football team. I still think the Niners are going to win tomorrow, though. Uh, anyways, Steelers, um, just an absolutely insane team um, just across the board. However... They're showing signs of just get. They're just tired. I mean, they've had to play the whole year. Their bye weeks have been have been screwed. They're gonna get a bye week at some point, but it's not this week. The Bills are hot right now. Josh Allen coming off like the game of his life. I'm pretty sure he was absolutely amazing against San Francisco. Uh, again, Steelers are tired. Their defense is very good, but it can't carry forever. Their offense has looked pretty flat. I've been saying for a while, I think the Pittsburgh offense is overhyped. I don't think it's that good. It's obviously way better than it was last year, but it's still not great. Um, Bills, again, red hot right now. Offense looks great. Defense isn't great. Injuries, and they're certainly regressing, but it's still not bad. 
Um, and with how hot Allen is right now, I don't see that changing. Uh, again, the Steelers are tired. I know Tomlin's an insane coach, but the Steelers have not had much rest. They lost Monday night. They have to go right back into it here tomorrow. Uh, I think the Bills are going to win this game. Should be a great game, and I'm really looking forward to it. But I'm going to go with Buffalo here. Go uh, go Buffalo. The Ravens will have a slim chance to win the division. If we win, actually. We don't have a chance. Dang it. Uh, because the Steelers can lose that and we can win up. But 11-5, 11-5, the Steelers do have a tiebreaker. But still, it still would help for the uh, Steelers to lose so we can get a higher seed. That's always helpful. So go Buffalo. Uh, but regardless, I'm going to go with the Bills here, guys. I think that they're, I don't know if they're the better team, but they're in better shape right now, we'll say. I'm going to go with Buffalo. Uh, let's go. I think it's going to be low scoring, I'm pretty sure. While Allen is coming off a great game, his like his best game of his career, I think it's going to be pretty low scoring. The Steelers' defense, very, very good. We can't we can't credit them enough. Allen should not do much against that defense. I'm going to go with the Bills here, guys. Uh, 23 to 7, 23 to 17. Kind of similar to last year, the when the Bills uh, beat the Steelers. It was in Pittsburgh, but it was very, very low scoring. Similar theme here. 23-17 Bills. Defenses dominate, but I'm going to go with Buffalo 23-17. All right, guys. Last game. Here we go. Monday Night Football. 7-5 Ravens at the 9-3 Browns. Ravens coming off a great win against Dallas. Dominant in the run game. Set our record for most rushing yards in a single game this season. Uh, Browns red hot right now. Coming off a shootout victory over the Titans last weekend. Um, man, that was that was pretty fun to watch. I don't know, guys. The Browns really, really worry me. They are clicking on all cylinders right now. Their defense looks good. I know they did give up like 30-something points to the Titans last weekend, but a lot of that was in garbage time, and overall, they did what they needed to do. They pretty much took Derrick Henry out of the equation. The Browns defense, again, a defense that doesn't look good on paper. It is, but it does overperform. I think their defense is kind of underrated, to be honest. Um, Again, in Cleveland... Should be a great game. I know week one, the Ravens absolutely dominated, but I can't see a repeat here. The Browns were a different team back then, and while the Ravens, they're not bad, but and I know it's a must win for the Ravens. We know we need to win this game. I don't see it happening, guys. I think it's going to be very, very close, and I could see us winning this game. I think we're going to fall just short. Uh, they are without Denzel Ward, the Browns. For us, I think we're getting just about everyone back. Uh, Matt Abuke's back. Judon's back. Huge, huge. Um, and Des Bryant should be back as well. I think he tested negative. It was a false positive. He has to finish his quarantine, and then he should be back for Monday night. That's always helpful if needed. Uh, anyways, a battle of two of top two rushing offenses. I'm seeing that as a headline here. That run, that run game is going to be really, really hard to stop with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Brown's offensive line has looked great, especially down the stretch this year. Uh, Calais Campbell missed practice, uh, I think, like all week this week. He's not 100% healthy. He should be better this week, assuming that he plays, because, you know, he missed practice for a reason to rest up, but I still have my doubts. I'll hope for the best, but I don't like the way it looks for Calais Campbell. We do have Derek Wolf. We are getting Matabuke's back. We are getting Jude on back, so our run defense shouldn't lay an egg, but it uh, without having a healthy Calais Campbell, it's going to be very, very difficult. I'm going to go with the Browns here, guys. Again, should be a great game. Could go either way. I'm going to go with Cleveland here, 30-23. to 23. And, guys, that is going to do it for my GameX for Week 14 of the 2020 NFL season. I know this was long. If you guys stayed in there the whole time, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to drop a like in the video. Just come to the channel if you are new. I am out. Peace out. Ha peace out. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Go Ravens. I will see you guys whenever I can to recap the Ravens-Browns game. I'll try to do Tuesday, but because of school responsibilities, it might be a bit tough. But I will see you guys as soon as I can after the Ravens game. Go Baltimore, man. going to be a great game.